Nobody seems to be talking about this, so hear me out. This is my brutally honest opinion and I need yours too at the end of this video. So PlayStation users already have an exclusive mission for the game as well as a feature thanks to the controller allowing it to be possible where you can use it to control motion whilst flying on your broom for instance. Now pre-ordering this game, of course depending on your version, also gives you some quote unquote exclusive content though we have been told it can actually be purchased separately after the game's released, at least some of it. So it's DLC content if you were to category it, specifically paid DLC content and really what this means once the game releases. Now if you've been in the loop on the news this past week, you'll also know it's been revealed that a fair amount of things were removed or completely redone in the game, and Quidditch was something initially in the game and then removed but you can still dress as if you are about to play a game of Quidditch so of course that just simply blew a lot of people's minds and really just asking that big question as to why would that even be a thing so it's rather clear that things have been held back for a reason and this is where I want to talk about paid DLC content as a whole and if it's actually the right or wrong thing to do so we've seen loads of games thrive off DLC content, so much to an extent where the launch has been rocky despite it being anticipated and then the DLC content saved the game literally. Now on the flip side we've also seen games provide so much free DLC content but still failed because from a cost standpoint it simply was not feasible. So I'm super hyped for Hogwarts Legacy but knowing the game won't include any form of multiplayer at least at launch anyway nor whether or not there will be a sequel though there are a lot of things that would make sense for it to have one but none of that is confirmed. So once the game is completed, where do players go? Is it a game that collects dust? Ultimately, what level is that replayability at, ultimately? Now this is what I don't want to see at all. What I would really love to see this game continue to do is add things throughout the year where that can just ultimately change the gameplay experiences, whether that be in the form of skins, missions, ones, new locations, etc. But I actually want them to charge for it to make sure it can be feasible from a development standpoint to where they can continue to add more things into the game and hopefully on a bigger level. Another factor as I said a moment ago is replayability and we've been speaking about a new game plus mode for a while now and that's a debatable topic alone but again we are factoring in the replayability levels. Now one of the main trigger points for me thinking this is simply because it's the only Hogwarts game or if you want to say Harry Potter game in the recent years. There's literally been nothing for a very very long time and this game has drawn in so many people right down to people who have literally not played a video game or very rarely play video games. Now one thing I love however is that they have been very transparent in a lot of things within the community which is crucial especially considering the flack that this game has actually received. So paid DLC content is it something you feel would actually draw you into the game more or is it a game you only want to play a few times and ultimately put it aside? Now to tie into this, get ready because next week something big is happening for this game so check out the video that you see on screen right now.